I don't want to be just good, I want to be great. I've always been like that. Football ended up being the game for me and I got a chance to go play at San Diego State, which was, which was amazing. I had some injury issues and some off the field issues that made it tough and I left the team and I left school. I had to reevaluate what I'm really into and what I really want to do because the thing that I poured so much into and what became my life is gone, it's done, it's over. It's always good to get hit in the face sometimes and be humbled. It really brings things back to square one. You ain't tired, come on, push it. There you go, suck it up, suck it up. It was always about that fashionable approach, even on the playing field. I remember playing high school football and our coach wouldn't let us spat our cleats where you put tape over them and it looked really, really cool. So I spatted and just, and just took the punishment. The first one is uh, this one on my wrist. My dad is like, hey, out of respect, like, wait until you're 18. And, uh, you know, out of respect, I did wait. My father was the biggest role model I've ever had. He was a pro skateboarder, so that was like one of the first things I was doing. That's when I started taking notice of details of fashion. I started to have to have certain things look a certain way. Levi's, Dickies, Vans, Airwalks, whatever you could afford at the time. But that was like the true essence of streetwear. And that's where I started designing. But I always aspired to take it to the next level. It was a competitive thing. So I took the time to take classes to learn each step of making a garment because, you know, high fashion, you can't fake it. Things that I wanted to do were things that maybe have been done a couple times, but not like this. The leather tee, the leather tank, the leather sweats, which is a piece that most people are just like, what is that? I didn't have a ton of money, so I had to like figure out what do, what do I want to sample with the money that I have? I would Instagram here and there. A couple people saw it and that started a little wave for the brand and we were very fortunate enough to have Kanye take all the samples. He ended up wearing a few. That started the public noticing. ASAP Rocky, Jay-Z is worn in, Beyonce. Once you're in that cycle and you're in that wheel, the wheel's not stopping for you. Hesitation could kill a brand. From that moment on, we hit the ground in a dead sprint. I mean, we showed Paris Fashion Week, we showed New York Fashion Week, Barney's. That's like playing at the highest of levels. I mean, it's been pretty nuts. The French term is in black. It's subtle and monochromatic, but it's aggressive, it's in your face. The way we're able to move and shake, a big corporate fashion house can't. It's kind of like an unknown journey, but every journey takes a first step. That, that, yeah, that's a good look yeah too. I like that one. What's good about our small team is that we all have the same hunger, but also kind of have that, you know, street mentality where you're kind of doing it a little different. MA1 jacket, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces. I like the juxtaposition of fabrics and things that usually don't make sense. A bulletproof type vest, silk chiffon with down fill, a water snake exotic, a rabbit fur, has our custom made on noir zippers. On the back side, the tattoo that I have. Fortune favors the brave. I really want the branding to come through in the details. This one actually has chain mail in it and all this had to be hand done. One of the things that we'll continue to show people that we're progressing and we deserve to be here is execution like this. Yeah, I really like this. This is a good one. On the inside, so many people like didn't think I was really doing anything with my life, but my dad is always the one who was like, you know, I see where you're going. I see what you're trying to do. And this year we're trying to do uh, the show in Central Park. Yeah, it'd be very nice, natural yeah. light. For him to be able to see what I was seeing um, was really special. And um, without like uh, his sacrifice and his forecasting, I, there's no way I would have had these opportunities. He went through some rough times trying to figure out what it is that he wanted to do. I think that, that, that goes a long ways to keep his, his feet on the ground. We've had some success with the brand, but it's always good to be an unfinished product. You're always the underdog. That's just in the natural DNA of On Noir. And here you got bigger. <laughs>